This video is about rates of change. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.2. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Find the average rate of change for the following functions on the given intervals. The average rate of change of f of x on the closed interval from a to b is f at b minus f at a over b minus a. This is just the slope of the secant line from a to b. Think y minus y over x minus x. To find the average rate of change of f of x on this interval, we need to start by finding f at negative 1. So plugging in negative 1 for x, we get negative 1 squared minus negative 1. So f at negative 1 is positive 1, and then minus a negative is addition, so this is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So that's f at negative 1. Next we need to find f at negative 2. So plugging in negative 2 for x, we have negative 2 squared minus negative 2. And f at negative 2 is 4 plus 2, which is 6. Now we use the average rate of change formula, f at b minus f at a over b minus a. So that's f at negative 1 minus f at negative 2 over negative 1 minus negative 2. But f at negative 1 is 2, and f at negative 2 is 6. Negative 1 minus negative 2 is the same as negative 1 plus 2. 2 minus 6 is negative 4, and negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. So the average rate of change is negative 4. To find the average rate of change of g of x on the interval from 2 to 5, we start by finding g at 5. So plugging in 5 for x, we have 4 times 5 plus 7. So g at 5 is 20 plus 7, which is 27. Next, we need to find g at 2. So that's 4 times 2 plus 7. g at 2 is 8 plus 7, which is 15. The average rate of change will be g at 5 minus g at 2 over 5 minus 2. That's 27 minus 15 over 5 minus 2. This simplifies to 12 over 3, which equals 4. So that's the average rate of change. To find the average rate of change of h on this interval, we begin by finding h at 12. So plugging in 12 for x, we get the square root of, well, 4 times 12 is 48. So I'm going to go ahead and put 48 plus 1. And h at 12 is the square root of 49, which of course is equal to 7. Now we need to find h at 2. So this is the square root of 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 1. So h at 2 is the square root of 9, which is 3. The average rate of change is h at 12 minus h at 2 over 12 minus 2. h at 12 was 7, and h at 2 was 3. So now we have this. This expression is equivalent to 4 over 10, which reduces to 2 over 5. And that is the average rate of change. To find the average rate of change of k on this interval, we begin by finding k at 10. So this will be 10 plus 1 over 10 minus 3 
let's see, that is 11 over 7. That's as far as that goes. Next, we need to find k at 4. So that's going to be 4 plus 1 over 4 minus 3. That's 5 over 1, which of course is simply 5. The average rate of change will be given by this expression, but k at 10 is 11 over 7, while k at 4 is 5. And this is all over 10 minus 4, and I think I will go ahead and put 6. We need like denominators here, so I'm going to multiply here by 7 over 7. So now we have 11 over 7 minus 35 over 7, all divided by 6. 11 minus 35 is negative 24. So we have negative 24 over 7, all divided by 6. To divide a fraction by a number, you take the number you're dividing by and multiply the denominator with it. So a over b divided by c is just a over b times c. So negative 24 over 7 divided by 6 is the same as negative 24 over 7 times 6. In this form, you can see that the 6 will divide evenly into the negative 24 four times. So we get negative 4 over 7. And that is the average rate of change. When you are given the graph of a function, it's easiest to think of the average rate of change as the slope of the secant line. So for example, in number 5, to find the average rate of change of p of x on the interval from 1 to 6, we need to identify the value of the function at 1, which is right here at negative 2, and the value of the function at 6, which is right here at 1. Now the secant line is the segment from here to here. And the average rate of change on this interval is simply the slope of the secant line. So rise over run. The secant line goes up three and over five. So that's the average rate of change on the interval. However, the directions did say to show all work. It feels a little silly because we already know the answer, but I'm going to go back and show the work. Here's the average rate of change formula at work. P at 6 is 1. P at 1 is negative 2. One minus negative two is really one plus two, so that's three. And of course, six minus one is five. So if they ask you to show work, that's how you do it. Let's do number six the short way first, because that's how you would do it if this was a multiple choice question. So at negative two, m of x has this value. And at 9, m of x has this value. So the secant line is this segment right here. We just need to find the slope of this line, rise over run. Notice this is a negative slope. So this is down 6 and over 11. So this is going to be negative 6 over 11. So if this was a multiple choice question, I would just pick this answer. However, on a free response question, they usually want you to show your work. So we need to do m at 9 minus m at negative 2 over 9 minus negative 2. m at 9 is negative 3 and m at negative 2 is positive 3. 9 minus negative 2 is the same as 9 plus 2. 
So this is negative 6 over 11, just like we thought. Number 7. Selected values for the function f of x are shown in the table above. Find the average rate of change for f of x from x equals 1 to x equals 8. The average rate of change will be f at 8 minus f at 1 over 8 minus 1. f at 8 is 3. f at 1 is negative 2 over 8 minus 1. 3 minus negative 2 is the same as 3 plus 2, which is 5. And 8 minus 1 is 7. So that is the average rate of change. Number 8. Let n of x equal x squared minus 4. The average rate of change of n of x over the closed interval from c to 5 is equal to 3, where c is a constant. Find the value of c. We are told that the average rate of change is equal to 3. So our strategy will be to write an expression for the average rate of change and set it equal to 3. To set up the average rate of change, we are going to need n at 5 and n at c. So let's start by finding n at 5, plugging in 5 for x, uh, that's going to be 25 minus 4, which is 21. Now we need n at c. Plugging in c for x gives us c squared minus 4. And that's all we can do for n at c. The average rate of change on this interval will be given by n at 5 minus n at c over 5 minus c. And we are told that this average rate of change is equal to 3. We know that n at 5 is 21, so let's plug that in. n at c is this expression. Be careful, we need to use parentheses for a moment because we are subtracting a binomial. So we need to do minus c squared minus 4 in parentheses because eventually we will have to distribute that minus sign and this minus 4 should become a positive 4. So we have all of this over 5 minus c and that is equal to 3. Distributing the minus sign gives us this. 21 plus 4 is 25 so we get 25 minus c squared over 5 minus c is equal to 3. This expression in the numerator is factorable. This is the difference of two squares. So we can factor this as 5 plus c times 5 minus c, all over 5 minus c. And this all is equal to 3. But then we notice that the 5 minus c will cancel out. As we cancel out this factor, keep in mind that no matter what else happens, c cannot equal 5, because this 5 minus c in the denominator was there from the beginning. So even though we're canceling it out now, c cannot be allowed to be 5, because if c was equal to 5, we would have 5 minus 5, which would be 0, and we'd be dividing by 0 in the original expression. So c can't be 5. Anyway, let's go ahead and cancel that out, and that leaves us with 5 plus c is equal to 3. Subtracting 5 from both sides gives us c is equal to negative 2. And that's the answer. The table above lists the annual budget in thousands of dollars for each of six different state programs in Kansas from 2007 to 2010. Which of the following best approximates the average rate of change in the annual budget for agriculture slash natural resources in Kansas from 2008 to 2010? Let f of x equal the annual budget for year x. 
the average rate of change for agriculture slash natural resources from 2008 to 2010 will be F at 2010 minus F at 2008 divided by 2010 minus 2008. So what is the annual budget in 2010? So this is the row that we need. And in 2010, it was 488,106,000. ,006 Next, we need the budget in 2008. So let's see, that's 358,708,000. ,008 Don't forget these numbers are in thousands. I'm going to cheat and use a calculator now, but we could calculate this by hand if we really had to. This expression simplifies to this, and 129,398 divided by 2 is 64,699 thousand dollars. So let's add a few zeros here. So this is the average rate of change which is best approximated by answer B. One small correction. This is the average rate of change in the annual budget, so the units should be in dollars per year, not just dollars. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.